Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we've discussed video game movies, and now it's time to discuss some conventions. Uh, Malik, you got some news from BlizzCon Online. I keep saying BlizzCon Online, but it's BlizzCon Line. It's very interesting. Yes. Why? It's a weird yeah. to say. Just call it Everything BlizzCon has to be a play on, on words. Yeah. I know. <laughs> It needs to stop. So, Malik, uh, obviously this happened. Too blizz, too con. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Malik, what were you most excited to see? For, first things first, Diablo 4. Uh, yes. Uh, I've been yes. waiting for this game forever. That universe to me is just... A, there's a lot that Blizzard does that is very cartoony. It's very vibrant. It is it is what it is. Even World of Warcraft, even when it dips into the dark side, it, it's still kind of like, you know, fairly PG-13. Mm-hmm. Diablo is their full, we don't care, we're going to give you nightmares. Like, I don't yeah. know if you guys watched the Diablo 4 <laughs> trailer, but... As that guy is spinning around and goes upside down on the pillar and the runes are starting to get carved into his skin and the mm-hmm. blood is seeping out, that that title is so cinematic. But other than that, Overwatch 2, we got a lot of Overwatch 2 news. Um, they're doing the Blizzard Arcade Collection, which it's okay. It's like when the <laughs> of their stuff. Like, why? Whatever. Um, there's obviously some more Hearthstone stuff, uh, but the big things here was Diablo 4. Uh, we got a new class. There's going to be the Rogue, um, which I'm super excited for. It's all about that dual wielding and the bows. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The the Rogue is finally making its way back. Um, we have the Barbarian, the Sorcerer, the Druid, uh, all confirmed coming back as classes. Nice. One of the one of the cool things about Diablo Four, though, is not only that they're expanding the world, but they're adding variations to the same items that you would get depending on where you pick them up in the world. So if you pick oh, it up in cool. the desert area, it's going to look more like uh, like a Middle Eastern shmitar. Uh, sure. If you pick it up in like the caves, it's going to be more Nordic, more bone. Uh, that kind of level of dedication to because diablo diablo as a franchise has had its user marketplace we've all heard the stories about how (laughs) badly it turned out but having some variation for these same items that we're going to be grinding for for probably hundreds of hours is is really nice are you guys diablo fans have you guys played steve you seem like you I, I'm all about the Diablo franchise. Um, I mean, you you kind of touched on it, but like for me, the Diablo two news was was the highlight out of BlizzCon because I I easily sunk yeah. 300, 400 hours. That was the first game like in my life that I was obsessed with as a kid, um, putting in so much time. So you no, know, I I totally get what you're what you're saying, and like seeing what how they've evolved that franchise over time to the now Diablo four and bringing back the role class, it, it's great, and I can't wait to. To finally see their full vision for this game, mm, I, I have yeah, not played I, too much I'm, about Diablo, but I've watched like family members play, and I would watch like obsessively. Um, I find it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch them play games. Um, I would find I find it interesting. <laughs> but it's just it was a hurdle. Med- I think I've mentioned this before. Medieval type games is always a tough time for me to get into, um, unless Fair it's sure. Medieval- the legend of zelda which isn't really medieval but you get what i'm saying fantasy whatever um but yeah so for me i i don't know this whole trailer though with the ears i was like oh my ears like how and it looks so good um and then i have to remember it's not because blizzard stuff obviously the type of game so like well it's not gonna look like that in game i just want a game that looks like the ears trailer can we get that (laughs) <laughs> well, you you were able to collect the ears of players that you killed in PvP. So yeah. oh, I'm excited to see damn. how this ties in because that was really important for the rogue story, is like because rogues were PvP gods. Like mm-hmm. it, it was impossible to stop a rogue in PvP. But her bringing him the ears and then it, him pointing, you know, that he has some sort of connection to what may be going on. The big thing with Diablo too is you're kind of like normal in the retrospect of medieval fantasy world worlds but you're mm-hmm. normal people fighting back hell like hell is coming for you and you're just trying to stop it yeah. um, but other than diablo overwatch 2 we got a lot of news about overwatch 2 um and the big thing about overwatch 2 that i want to talk about is that there's a big shift it seems like from where the game is now this heavily main pvp focus to mm-hmm. switching to a skill tree rpg pve 
based game. Now, what this ties for the or what this, you know, kind of forebodes for the esports scene, I'm not sure of. But I love this new look for Overwatch. I, I'm just absorbed with it. The skill trees, the being able to modify heroes and characters, it, it's really what the series needs to revitalize it and make it fun again. Here, here's what I wonder though. And and first of all, in terms of Diablo 4, looks cool. I I'm I've never been into it. You know, that's the not necessarily my kind of game, but mm -hmm. Like what I will say as a general note is that BlizzCon line uh, <laughs> was uh, was pretty cool. It seems like they brought the thunder, and a lot of people were really hyped coming out of it. Or after finishing watching or watching it, and Diablo Four was a, a big topic of conversation online for a bit. But in terms of Overwatch Two, do you guys see a similar pattern here or a similar sort of trend here to what happened with Destiny and them doing Destiny Two because I feel like had Bungie been departed from Activision a lot earlier, Destiny would have just been Destiny. Like right, there yeah. would have been no Destiny 2. Like, is there yeah. even a point for it to be called Overwatch 2 rather than just them like taking yes. Overwatch as the brand that it is, continuing to expand on it by adding a PvE mode? You know, they keep trying to reiterate that this is a new refined Overwatch. It, all I and it's funny that you say Destiny 2 because this is in my notes and I wanted to bring it up. Mm. There's the section where they bring up the map and the missions, and I was right. like, "Oh, this is this is Destiny 2's orbit. Like yeah. you're just gonna go uh, choose okay. a mission and do yeah, it over yeah, yeah. and over again until you get the certain <laughs> mod or certain like gun with the per." I I'm really excited because I like Destiny. I like Destiny Two. I like the the gameplay arc of that. Yeah. I just wish that Overwatch was going to be something more of like a linear story where you can change out the heroes that you play it with, and maybe go back and play with different heroes who aren't included in the story, and maybe mm. you know you can unlock new areas because a different character has different mobility. But right. they brought up things like like weather and like the different time changes of maps, and I'm like, that's cool. But that's been happening in games forever. Like, what <laughs> what else are you adding on? And they keep talking about, like, they did this live weapons test. I don't know if you guys saw this, but they yeah. were, like, firing machine guns and all this stuff to get better acoustics. But at the end of the day, too, I don't know how that's going to translate to the overall feel of Overwatch. Because Caboose, yeah. like you said, if it doesn't feel like a completely new game, people are going to be wondering, what's the point? Why did we wait so long? For Why this? do we play full price? Will we? But, is it going to be a full price game? Or there? I don't think they can. I, they ha It has to be. It has to be under forty dollars or free to play with expansions. Because but, yeah. there's no way people are going to pay sixty. Sorry, Caboose. Yeah. <laughs> Well, okay, let's go to my world, Call of Duty. Exactly. I pay over and over again every yeah. year. I blow 80 bucks on a game. <laughs> and there's and one I'm... thing in common. It's both Activision. <laughs> I was going to oh, say. <laughs> so, exactly. really, with all due respect, I, I, I admire uh, admiration for you know them keeping it $40, but Activision, there's no way in hell they're not going to charge Here's the thing, Last though, the over, yeah. with how they've been, it, I agree with that, but with how the Overwatch community currently is, mm -hmm. I don't think they can survive shipping it at $60. Yeah. Streamers don't play the game yeah. anymore because of long queue times and toxicity. The esports scene is falling apart. Yeah. It, like, there's not that much support in patches for the game. They, they've kind of dwindled off. I get it, they're working on the second yeah. iteration. Go ahead, Camille. Do you think because it was just, I think a lot of those things happened, especially within the esports community, was because they, it was a long time to get the second iteration. You know, Blizzard was not working on the original Overwatch for quite some time, um, not updating it or anything like that, because they, they said that their sole focus was the second iteration. I'm a Call of Duty fan, okay? We go through this every year where we're like, oh my God, I hate this game. Like, there's not even any updates anymore. Like, what are they doing? And then I'm right there on launch day, <laughs> booting up the new <laughs> yep. Call of Duty. And it's, it's unfortunate because, you know, I find that with Warzone, Activision found a lot of success with just making this free to play mode and putting updates like season two is coming. There's a storm in there. We don't know what's going on. It's very exciting times. Right. <laughs> they're still launching. They know they know how to make money. So they're still launching a new Call of Duty. You know, there, there's still right. something new coming out. They're going to do these annual releases. I hope it's not that frequent for Overwatch. 
However, I do feel like they may be taking some of Call of Duty's model into Overwatch too. But the thing is, though, like, yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you, Camille. But it's so strange that they're taking such an approach with Call of Duty where they have Warzone where they can have and build this dedicated fan base. And then even though like Cold War came out or say like the next 2021 game is coming out, they're still going to be committed to Warzone and not uh, tear apart that fan or that player base. It's so strange that, you know, then you look at Blizzard and they're so adamant as to develop Overwatch 2 and then possibly divide that fan or player base again. Um, it's, just, it's just weird. Like, why wouldn't they just have that bit of foresight to be like, okay, we're going to make Overwatch a platform. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and there and there's two things that you, you said there that really make sense. Is one, it it needs to become a platform, and I think same thing with Destiny Two. They're going to make Overwatch Two the platform that just gets added onto over time. But like Call of Duty, they could do something where Overwatch Two PvP is free to play, but you mm-hmm. got to pay thirty, forty bucks for this PVE story content. Um, and aside from that too, there's really been this kind of uh, delay in uh, support to make the community better. They mm-hmm. can't just say, here's a new game, it's it's new, here you go, and then expect everything to be fine. The same toxicity is going to carry over yeah. if they don't keep up the same support. Yeah. Esports titles theoretically should last for a very long time. Dota, League of Legends, CSGO, yep. you yep. got to have longevity. Like, yeah, Call of Duty does iterations every year, but you don't want to be the Call of Duty where you have to right. iterate every year. You want your game to be made, constantly patch it, and, you know, get it to the state where people are playing it consistently, not just letting toxicity run rampant and then mm-hmm. making a new game with PvE two, three, four years later <laughs> because, you know, you can't really fix the problems now. Yeah. Well, I'm excited like, overall. I hate to sound negative, but yeah. you know, I feel like toxicity is a whole nother issue. Like that's just the, the publisher's commitment and the developer's commitment to making that, you know, not a thing in their game. Like there's there was a that problem they- with that for a little bit with Warzone. I know, and, well, I, and I think it still Call is. Of, yes, Call yeah. of Duty is one of the most was one of the most toxic communities growing up on Call of Duty. Oh gosh, yep. it was toxic as a female of color. You, you didn't want yeah. to be on, on It became your like a stereotype, mm-hmm. you know. Exactly. Like, but yeah. then last year Activision really took a few steps yeah. to be like, look, there is more that we could do. They assess, they're like there's more that we could do to stop slurs from happening in game, ban certain usernames, and they implemented those things. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but that was a step in the right direction. So I feel like toxicity in terms of like a second iteration, it could just be as toxic, right? Um, The community could still be as toxic. That's a whole nother issue. I just hope that, you know, for the community's sake, they're able to at least get something out of the second game so it feels fresh and really justifies that full price point because you know you're going to be paying out your pockets for this But also, is there enough from like... Like for somebody who may be new coming into Overwatch, there may be an intriguing aspect to trying out a PvE mode and having those RPG elements and skill trees and stuff. But to someone who's been playing Overwatch and has been hardcore into it for however long, is this something that Overwatch fans want? You know, like if you've been into the PvP for however long, do you want something that's so far detached from that? Mm -hmm. Or maybe that becomes a free mode. Right, like maybe yeah. what fans are used to that becomes like the maybe. war mode, yeah. maybe. and then what they're doing with two that's now what their paid iterations is. Because look at League, right, and like Hearthstone, all the card games that have spawned right. because of one game, right? Um, yeah. I feel like that's maybe what they're trying to do here with Overwatch. Um, it's just you have to have that core fan base and you know yeah. do that work first to make sure they're satisfied before you expand out yeah um but for but for now or sorry malik you want to say one more thing before no we move- the the last thing is to answer caboose uh yes this is exactly what i want because i i don't play overwatch anymore because i'm tired of going into pvp okay. and hearing slurs and mm. dealing with toxicity and throwers and all this other stuff okay so okay the, this pve is actually going to be a breath of fresh air and i'll personally enjoy playing it and and hopefully the community will start to like mellow out and get it, you know, have that self-check. For sure. Yeah. yeah.